Hi, I'm Tom and in this video I will show you how the Draft Move tool works in FreeCAD. Draft Move tool is part of the Draft Workbench and it's also available in the BIM Workbench. It's meant to move objects. I'm using FreeCAD 1.0 in this tutorial. The Move tool is available from the Draft Modification toolbar and if I fire it up, FreeCAD asks me which objects I want to move so I can select this object. And then the task panel opens up with the, with the tool properties. But I can just click somewhere where the first point, the grab point will be. So I will snap to this lower left corner. And now if I move my cursor, you can see that I'm moving the whole object and I select the second point. So I click here and the tool finishes. I move the first point to the second point location and the whole object moved with those points. Now what I prefer is to first select the objects that I want to move and then fire up the tool. And then I select the first point. I can easily select the point somewhere outside of the object. And then if I move my mouse, you can see that I'm moving the object and I can click here. So it's placed here. This is all nice, but usually you want to move an object uh, in exact uh, distances. So let's say I want to move this object 500 millimeters in the X axis and 250 millimeters in the Y axis. So I will select the object, fire up the move tool. And now what's important here is you have the settings that I have. So the relative is checked and global should be unchecked. I describe these two options in a different video tutorial, which is linked in the description below. And now you can actually insert the location, not by clicking uh, in 3D view, but by inserting coordinates. And it's either these three Cartesian co coordinates or these two polar coordinates. So first I'm selecting the, uh, the point which I will grab this one on. And this one doesn't really matter now. It can be, I will just click here. And now it's asking me for the second point. So I will just move my mouse and type in. And while I'm typing in, it's typing in into the Cartesian coordinate. So I will move my mouse here and type in 500, hit enter, 250, hit enter, and local Z will be zero, hit enter. And this is how I move the object through those coordinates. Now, if I want to move the polar coordinates, I will select this object and let's say I want to move it 2000 millimeters uh, to the top. So I will fire up the move tool, select po the first point somewhere, it doesn't matter where. And I have to now actually click here and type in 2000, hit enter and the angle will be 90, hit enter. So this is how you use polar array. The angle to the right is zero, the angle to the top is 90, the angle to the left is 180, the angle to the bottom is 270. Now let me show you with the polar array, I will still move this object. I will fire up the move tool, click somewhere here. And if I, uh, check this angle box and type in let's say 45 now i'm locked if i have this checked uh, it locks this uh, angle and now i'm move, moving my mouse and actually the angle is set to those 45 degrees so i could either click somewhere or i can choose i could snap to something so if i click here I snap, snap to there. So this might be useful. Now let me show you what you might encounter if I move this object 2000 millimeters to the top and I would be using the uh, Cart uh, Cartesian coordinates. I don't have to fill in all those three numbers. I can lock the direction. I will again first click some random points and now I want to lock the movement only to the y-axis and I do that 
by hitting the Y key. And this locks the movement just to the Y axis. If I hit, if I would have hit X, it would lock the movement just to the X axis. So uh, this way I can type in just 2000, hit enter, and it's moved 2000 millimeters in the Y axis. Uh, using the Cartesian coordinates, you have to manage the plus or minus uh, direction. So if I again start the first point here hit the y uh, key and now if i want to move the object back to here i have to be careful to type in minus 2000 millimeters and hit enter so be careful about the directions if you are using the cartesian coordinates now what i prefer to do instead of locking the direction with the x z or y keys i use the shift key so if i start the move tool click let's say this point move my mouse and if i hit shift i'm locked you can see to the y uh, direction if i release shift i'm moving free and if i move my mouse here hold shift i'm locked to the x axis so i usually prefer moving this way so i will move my mouse here hold shift if i now release shift and don't move my mouse i can type in the distance so i will type in 2000 and hit enter and this is how i usually move objects so but i still have to be careful if i now want to move that object down i will click here move my mouse here hold shift stop moving my cursor release shift and I, now i have to type in minus 2000 millimeters now to avoid this thinking about whether it's plus or minus what i do i will show you a little trick is i prefer to have this setting turn on i will go to edit preferences and in the draft preferences in general i like to check set focus on length instead of x coordinate so if i check this and hit ok now if i select this object start the move tool and now i click the first point and if i move my mouse you can see that the focus is not on the x axis but on the length so if i move my mouse here and hold shift i can again type in 2000 because it's i'm locked in the direction 90 and and i typed in 2000 but the advantage of this is that if i fire up the move tool again click here and if i'm moving in the negative y direction and i hold shift i don't have to bother typing in minus i can now just type in 2000 and i put it's moving 2000 in the dire direction that i pointed so i prefer this setting to typing in uh, cartesian coordinates now let's take a look at some tool options so if i select the rectangle start the move tool uh, the quite important one is the copy option if i check copy i will be moving this object but it will also stay on the original place and i will create a copy so i will click the first point here move my cursor here click here and i created the copy of this object now you have to be careful if i select this object and i would want to use the move tool again the copy is checked so i would now create a be creating a copy so now i wouldn't be moving so now i have to uncheck the copy to move the to move the object now usually when i create copy i forget to uncheck the copy again and uh, i create the copy next time but fortunately in the bim workbench you have the move tool but you also have the bim copy tool which works the same as the move tool but it has got the copy turned on by default so if i select this object and i want to copy it i will go straight to the bim copy it has got the same setting but the copy is turned on so i can create a copy and if i want to move this tool 
I can use the move tool and I don't have to I don't have to fiddle with the C setting with the copy setting so I like uh, how the BIM workbench has, has both of these tools uh, independently of each other. Now the next option of the move tool is the continue. I don't find this very useful. It just if I move an object, move it here, it then automatically starts another move tool after the first one. So I can just click here, click here, click here, click here. So I'm moving moving the objects the object selected until i hit the close button so i don't find this very useful what can be useful sometimes is the if i select not the whole object but just let's say this line so i have this the sorry the edge selected so i didn't select the whole object but just the edge I can move only the edge. I will select the move tool and instead of I will uncheck continue and I will select modify sub elements. Modify sub elements means that I will be moving just these selected sub elements. So now I can click here, move the line here and it moves the moves the line like so. But this modify sub elements only works with uh, with draft wire uh, and draft rectangle uh, so it has to be these uh, these special objects it does not work with uh, with uh, most objects so i will uncheck this one and hit close now so far i have been moving always just the one object but here I have a sofa and it's uh, made out of several edges and fillets, etc. So of course I can move multiple objects at once. So I will box select with shift B, drag my selection like so. I've got all these objects selected. Now I select move tool. I again click at the first point, move my cursor, click the second point. So. Of course, you can move, move multiple objects at once. Now here is an example. So far what I was showing you, it was not important where I selected the first point. But let's say if I wanted to move this sofa so that this corner is placed at this corner here. So I would select the sofa and fire up the move tool. And uh, now it's important which uh, point you select as the first one because now you can move the object here as the second one so this is how the first or the second objects are important let's say if i want to move this sofa that this corner is here so they are next to each other i would move and the first point i will select this one the second point this one now all of what I was showing you was moving the objects in the x, y directions, so in one plane. But of course you can move objects also in 3D. Uh, you would change the local z or if you snap to some 3D point it will move in the 3D. But you have to be mindful that the primary movement, let's say if you uh, insert length and angle, always the primary movement is in the XY plane. So this is all you need to know about the draft move tool. If you like using FreeCAD, consider supporting the project by donating to it. The link to the donate page is in the description box below. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.